All right, y'all. So I am currently back with another video. And I haven't really done a sit down, just chat kind of car vlog. And I said, why not? I have like 50 minutes until my mom gets off work. And that's where I'm currently at. Um, 6.10, she gets off at 7 today. Currently sitting over on the side. I have to put together um, a vlog from like over here the other day. And I got to put that together. It was me and Lex. And then, yeah. So, basically, in a nutshell, um... I don't even know where to start, y'all. Uh, I'm just going to tell y'all. So, I have this chapstick. It's currently fall. It's October, October 10th, to be exact. And I've noticed that my lips were starting to stick to my teeth and my tongue. Well, not necessarily my tongue, but sometimes my tongue, my teeth, and my, like, together... And I was just, I felt like I constantly had to lick my lips and whatnot. So, I broke out my handy dandy chapstick. This is vanilla latte. Hold on. This is vanilla latte. I actually got this back in April when I was with my mom and my aunt and the kids. And we went on the trip. That is currently on my YouTube channel if you guys want to watch it. And as I talk, I know this is going to be kind of boring, but, um, I'm trying to find a place to find this for a moment, so that worked. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and give us a big thumbs up, and I'm just, I'm ever so wantsly trying to keep an eye on my mom, but, see if she's coming out, but don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and comment, and give us a big thumbs up. It really helps promote the channel, and I have been working on this channel for five years it'll be six in july so like right before i've returned a year old is when i started my channel so crazy to think but today we just made chicken and dumplings for dinner and um i worked on my i want to call it my scrappy blanket but yet it i can't really say scrappy but i can what it was, was I had some pieces of scrap yarn that I wound it, you know, that I tied together or added in, um, depending on how, like, I already had the ball made or, like, little bitty ones. And then I had some, um, big cakes of yarn that were, like, they was, like, solid, so, like, wasn't variegated, but it was, like, solid where it was, like, reds and red and then yellow and then blue and then green and then white and then purple and then, like, you know, so I was taking two strands of, like, skeins and balls, and I was putting it together. And it's pretty wide. Um, a little bit wider than what I make. I'm currently working on the height. So, I'm working on that. I started that one. Oh, gosh. My mom has been with us. Okay, so today's the 10th. She went on her kayaking trip the 22nd of last month came back the 24th I'm trying to think and then I think Sunday I took her to work or she was off I think she was off Monday I took her to work yeah so that Monday I took her to work my grandma took her to work Tuesday and Wednesday because she was in another location out by them and then Thursday and so, she's been with us since that, like, following Thursday. So, whatever that Thursday was after the 22nd, the first day of fall. And I started that one about that time, actually, when she came here. And it's almost finished. When I say almost finished, I did... I'm just... I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it. So, I did all the scrappy pieces together. And then I had two, four, six... I used one of them on the rug that's in the kids' bathroom, so that's eight. So I have, like, six or seven skeins of this one color yarn. 
and I absolutely love this yarn. It's really pretty, but um, what I was going to do was I finished the blanket, and then I was like, okay, I'll do like the border all the way around, but then I realized that the more I went this way, it was going this way because it go it's going in the round, which I'm fine with, but I was like, I don't want to make it any much too much longer, but I really need to build this height, so I was like, you know what? It's it's our blanket, all blanket, or, you know, no blanket is the same as the other one. So, I have the scrappiness, all the scrappy pieces in the middle. And then I was taking, because it's two strands. It's a two-stranded blanket. So, I took two of the same skein of that blue, brown, and teal, and turquoise. And I want to say there's, like, black in it, maybe? And I did them. So, I did, took two of them and went all the way around as much as I could. And then I took another two that I'm working on going back and forth. Like I was, because I started in, like, the rows. And then, um, I'm going to work up that way as far as much as I can go. And then take the other two and go across the bottom. Leaving me, so that's six skeins right there. Leave me with one skein left over. And I was told, like, in order for me to stick with something, I have to, like, verbally say it out loud. And when I verbally say it out loud, I'm usually around Daniel. So I decided that that last skein of yarn, because it's a two-strand blanket, and I can turn that last skein last skein into another two strands by pulling from both ends but i don't want to do that this time so i'm going to save that one and work on another scrappy blanket and put that one in there and yeah and then i'm under i'm honestly i'm undecided on what i want to do with the outside um i know i'm going to single crochet it and single crochet the border but I'm undecided because I have a bunch of, and I don't think they're in here anymore. I think they went inside the house. Yeah, they went inside the house. So I had some um, glow-in-the-dark yarn that I was using that's incorporated in it. But I think I'm going to take a solid color, maybe like a brown or a black or something that I have. And take that and do the whole entire border with that and the neon color or the glow in the dark um, yarn to go with it. So that's what I plan on doing. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. That's probably how I'm going to finish it. And yeah, it's currently cold. Um, today it's going to be a high. It was, was supposed to be a high of 73. And like it's been it's it's weird it's fall so it's been it's in Kentucky so it's been like at night it's been like 32 just watching this car over here so it was like 32 30 42 43 45 50 62 33 like it's been all over the place and of a daytime it's been like 44 50 something, 60 something, 70 something. And then I think there was one day where it was a high of 80. And that's like I'm talking about since fall. So it's been like really, really fluctuating, which has been messing with everybody's sinuses and congestion and just a lot of sneezing and everything, which I'm not a germaphobe. I'm really not. Honestly, I believe in, you know, practice safe hygiene, don't sneeze in people's faces. But also at the same time, I believe in that germs are okay. That's how we build our immune system and whatnot. And it's just, it's a part of life. Like if you don't ever, if you're someone that never ever gets sick, when you do get sick, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks and you're going to be out. Um, oh, currently it's Harry Potter week. Uh, today's Sunday. No, I'm sorry. Today's Monday. Kids go back to school tomorrow, but, um, Daniel started vacation Saturday, last, this, like, past Saturday, and the kids have been on vacation since last Thursday, so they've had fall break, they had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then today, so Monday, and they go back tomorrow. Daniel's got his vacation, one, he needed to take the vacation because he's put in so many hours and everything at work. The other, and then we're like, you have to take your vacation. So he dedicated a week to Harry Potter week. And we currently have Mr. James, or Mr. Harry Potter on our front deck. 
and um my mom actually i don't think no she's she said she's never seen any of the harry potter movies um i used to not get big into harry potter until i got with daniel and it became like this like every fall for a week we would watch every video like one video of it a day or every one video per night except for saturday it was either yeah it was saturday we watched two of them in one day we watched the first one friday to saturday yesterday one and then we're gonna be watching one tonight because the kids have school tomorrow but i got my hogwarts cup daniel has a hogwarts cup um, Daniel has Baltimore's wand that his sister got him many, many years ago. And then he's got a wand that will not be hooked up this time, like I was hoping. But he's got an actual remote control wand where you set it and it programs and you can control your TV with it. The kids all have one of these, plus the Harry Potter glasses. And this one's actually my mom's because there was four to a pack. I have three kids, so... Oh, it's just lighting up this time. What's going on with hers? Anyways, it's supposed to make a noise. Hers has been weird. So, like, the kids, they can push the button on there, and it makes the light up. It lights up, and it makes the sound. I don't know if y'all can see that on my roof, but... Hey, Destiny, let's... I don't know. I don't know what's... But anyways, Daniel's got a cauldron that has... Um, he's got the cauldron that you can eat out of. And it comes with the, the stirring spoon. Um, we got a sign that says, No Muggles Allowed. Harry Potter. Um, we got... Each one, it came in a set. There's a candles for all of the Hogwarts houses. So we got Slytherin, uh, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. And then every night after the movie, Daniel does, um, he's been asking them questions about it, trivia questions. And if, when they get one right, they get candy or they can they get candy. And if it's like a really big one, um, they get to pick out the prize box that Daniel, me and, well, me and Daniel went, not trying to take credit because I don't want to do that but went to the store and um he picked them all out it's like a bunch of cars that change color and um whistles like Halloween like the cars aren't Halloween but like color changing cars and um Hot Wheels because all of, all three of our kids our daughter and our two boys mostly the boys are into Hot Wheels Mason used to be really big in the cars Lex is really big in the cars now um Lex is two almost three and he's like grown this like big um just factuation with rooms and bees which is cars trucks and bees are buses so he's currently obsessed um so he got a bunch of those and the kids all got like halloween related like uh, vampire teeth that glow um scented play-doh um you know just stuff they could pick out of uh, what else did we do for hollow for harry potter halloween or Harry Potter movie week. Um, we did not get uh, butter beer this time. First of all, it's like $42 for a six pack. And there is six of us in the house right now. Like, even if my mom wasn't there, there's I, I, we're not paying that. We can go to Cracker Barrel and get one for two. No, I think it's like a dollar seventy-five. We'll just we'll say two dollars. We can get one of the um glass bottles of it for like two bucks at Cracker Barrel and which we hardly ever go like literally we hardly ever go there and me and Daniel was debating on getting them but you know we were like hey hold on you know this year we got the wand like I I went all big for Harry Potter week because I was like this is Daniel's big thing um you know and he wanted to make it fun for the kids so I was like you know what we can do butterbeer some other time like seriously we can do it some other time my mom can try it some other time you know and my mom's actually really getting into um harry potter week uh she's like she how best way to explain it like it's not my mom's 
top favorite movie ever. Like, my mom is like me. And Harry Potter is not my top favorite um, anything. Or, well, it's not my top favorite that I would personally pick and select. But, hey, you know what? Daniel's into it. The kids are into it. And it'd be the same way with me. Like, I'm, I love the Muppets. Daniel does not. Um, would Daniel ever go and select it? No, he would not. But because I like it, he likes it. You know what I mean? Um, and I get into it. And it's not like I fake like, it. you know, I fake like it. Like, it's just, it's part of being a relationship, part of being a family. You know, like how when you got somebody that likes a certain sport and you're not into it, but you know they like that sport and you're like, hey, I'm going to watch it and, you know, enjoy it with them. I may not like it i may not love it but i'm gonna enjoy it with them um so same thing with my mom but she's really getting into it um she actually yesterday with the wand and the glasses she went into work looking like harry potter so that was really fun um the kids gave her some halloween spooky earrings i think she's got because I, I bought some of those. I have light up earrings that dangle. And they're pumpkins. And they light up. And then I've got these which are. Which you can't really see. But I got regular pumpkins that hang off your ears. Oh these are. These are little owl. They're owls. But they got like witches hats on them. So got those. And on my mom she's got the cats. The black cats. Um, the vampire coffins, uh, green studs, and I think purple studs that was on that one, and I can't remember. I know my mom's got four holes on each of her ears, so I want to say that's it. You got the purple, hold on, purple, green, the cats, and the vampire coffins. Yeah, so she's got those on her ears. And Aubrey's got Minnie Mouse on hers, on her ears that my mom switched out. She used to have, um, I cannot think of the owl's name for the life of me and I know it. Cadwig? Cadwig? It's something like Hagrid, but it's Harry Potter's, um, it's Harry Potter's owl that Hagrid bought for him. And, um, she had those on her ears and I had the Harry Potter envelope, the Harry Potter, like, letters on mine. Switched those out and it's funny because we're supposed to be wearing them for Harry Potter week, but what I learned with those was, um, they were too heavy for my ears, which I can hold some weight, but those are too heavy for my ears, definitely too heavy for Ob's. And they just, they hurt. Like, some weird way they hurt. I've had my ears pierced since I was a baby. And these, these hurt. Not the ones I have on, but they hurt. And, um, same thing with the owls. Like, Aubrey, Aubrey, like, Aubrey wore hers and everything. But I've noticed that since she's got the lighter weight ones on her, they don't bother her as much. And so we swapped them out, which I'm perfectly fine with. The other thing, too, was when I got the Harry Potter ones... Like, these, these are from Walmart. These are, um, oh, crap, I can't think of it. Like, they're not 100% real, like, you would get out of the jewelry department and stuff like that, but they're not 100% fake. And I cannot wear fake, fake earrings, but I can wear these. Um, like, my ears turn red. Granted, my ears are red right now because it's hot. But... Same thing with OBS. Like, OBS can tolerate things a little bit better than I can on my ears. But, like, my ears will turn, like, green and red and, um, like, swell and bubble. So, I have to be careful what I get. And I think what happened was the Harry Potter ones. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty pissed off about it. Like, it is what it is. But I have other people in my family and people that I know that, like, um, that can wear those earrings and that are... Harry Potter, you know, they do like Harry Potter and stuff, so I can give them to them. Not the ones we wore, unless they want them and they can, you know, they want to clean them and stuff like that. But I came as a whole entire pack and I paid, oh my goodness, I think for a set, I think it was a set of 12. I paid like 50 bucks for these earrings because I was like, look, 
I'm not the one that goes and buys earrings all the time, but it's for Harry Potter week and you know, they're really cool. It's got like all of them. They got, you got, let me think you got the, you got Sirius or you got Cerberus and Snape's, um, deer. You've got, um, Harry Potter's owl. You got the lightning, you got his scar, the lightning bolt scar. Um, you've got the letters, the Harry, the Hogwarts letters. Um, you've got the cauldron, you've got the wands, you've got, um, oh my goodness, I can't even think. Um, oh, you got the invisibility cloak, you got, I'm trying to like go in order of like my memory on like the rows of what they were. Um, you've got, oh my gosh, oh, you got Fang, you got Fang on there, um, Hagrid's dog, um, I can't remember all of them, but, you know, they were really cool, and I was like, well, shoot, I can sit there, I can get these, these are really cool, and then they... They affected my ears really bad, so I'm not doing that one bit. I'm just sad and depressed, but you know, it is what it is. Lesson learned, whatever. Um, oh, we made we made hot chocolate through you know throughout the week for Harry Potter night. We made hot chocolate. We've made um. Oh, we had, um, pumpkin pie, or not pumpkin pie, we had brown sugar, brown sugar something apple pie, it was a private select selection, um, from Kroger's, like, private selection brand, really good, um, it was given to us, and we heated it up, and then we had eggnog ice cream with it, and Oh my goodness, it was so good. So good. Had that with Harry Potter um, for the movies. We had pizza. We've had um, leftovers. We had, um, like, we. I didn't, I didn't go all out like I did last year on the food. So, like, last year, for example, like, the first night, it was, the troll was a big part of it. I made, um, troll waffles were just waffles that were green and, um, you know, fun for the kids. I didn't do that this year. I wanted to, but plans didn't work out like that. And then, um, um, we made butter beer last year. Um, we made, we made the sorting hat pastries. Um, oh, one night last year I made breakfast for, di for dinner. Um, Really, anything that they were eating dur during the movies, um, that's what we made that night. So, like, is it the third one? I want to say it's the third one. Is it the no, it might. It very well could be the fourth, to be honest. I think it's the fourth one where in the movie they're sitting there in the Gryffindor's dormitory and they're eating the candy. And the candy... Um, the one kid sounded like a monkey, Neville sounded like um, an elephant, Ron sounded like a lion, and Harry became a train. So, um, we got the, oh, shit, what the heck are they called? They're jelly beans, but it's like the the game, like when you spin it, you have to pick the one, and like, it could be as simple as like vomit, or toothpaste, or um, chocolate, or dog poop, or... Um, key lime pie or key lime pie or like the other one like it would have been um uh boogers or you know what i'm talking about I can't, I can't remember the name of it played it used to play it as a kid a lot but we got those um we got warheads because the kids couldn't handle spicy stuff last year so we got warheads and um they ate those and then we got um Oh, in the first one, you know how they got the chocolate frog? 
So, like, for the first movie, I sat there and I took the plastic. And, I mean, honestly, you can get them at Dollar Tree. You can get them at Walmart. The party favors. But, you know, those little plastic frogs where, like, you push their butt and then, like, they hop. Like, it's just something super easy in plastic. I took one of those. And, um, I put... I'm trying to explain it the best way I can. I made, like, a... And it was kind of super simple, I guess. But it was, like, a pain in the butt. I will never do that again. Because it was just... Like, the thought process was easy. Trying to keep the chocolate wasn't as much. And it was like, I had the I had the frog in the plastic, like, thing that I stuck it in. Like, a, um, kind of something, like something you get out of, like, the quarter machine. And then I coated it with chocolate. So, like, they got their chocolate frog at the beginning. Um, super easy to make. The only thing was, is you do not want to break the plastic. <laughs> Which I didn't do that, but that was like the plastic that the F frog goes in. I did not, man. And then trying to keep the chocolate melted, trying to not to like break things. So we did that. And then like last year we had um chick or we had drumsticks. Um you know, like just trying to keep it fun. So like I said, this year I didn't do the cooking so much. I think next year, now that we have the stuff and the wand will be set. Um it's not hard to set. It's just a matter of sitting down and figuring out, like, it's one of those things where it doesn't really come with instru instructions. The instruction that it says, like, sucks. It's just, like, if you want to set it, it there's nine settings. This way, this way, this way, this way, um, this way, this way, um, swing it, or then, like, swing it, and, like, I mean... But it doesn't tell you how to actually program it. So you have to sit there and watch the YouTube video. And then you have to catch it at the right moment. And da 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 da. So. That wand will be set next year. And then like you know the kids all have all their stuff. So it will just be a repeat thing again. Of where you know it's already there. It's already set. We already have it. Um, and then next year I could just work on you know the food. This year in all honesty. It was mostly leftovers and whatever we had in the fridge it like it's it's whatever like um i had i call it um green casserole soup basically it's a uh, it's really whatever ground meat you have so i had ground turkey that was given to us with the pie so i had um ground cook ground turkey and then i had some turkey like spam and I like grounded it up and you know I mashed it up in the pan like cooked it all up and then I added potatoes green beans and some other vegetables and some noodles and I just cooked it I just cooked it till it was all tender everything was like at the right the right time so we had that that was um some leftovers from like the night before so night it was either the night before I made it or night before that but had that um, had some ramens. I mean, literally, it was mostly leftovers. Um, pizza rolls, pretzels, um, you know, just leftovers. So that's what we had. And it's currently 6.38. And I am talking up a storm. I've been on here for 30 minutes, almost. So I think I'm just going to hop off of here. And I'll see you all in another video. Felt great to talk to you guys. Mostly about Harry Potter, most about what we're talking about. Oh, before I go, um, Thursday was the, sixth, fifth or sixth, Thursday was the fifth or sixth, I want to say it was the fifth. We decided to go down to Alexandria Community Park down by our house. Uh, it's a little bit of a way. Uh, maybe like 45 minutes, give or take. We had some other things we had to do. My mom was off work. We go over there. been over there plenty of times. As a matter of fact, I showed my mom and my grandmother and my cousin and his old lady and the, their, you know, their kids and my aunt and all them and my uncle. I was like, hey, I really like this park. You got the lake that you can walk around. Um, you got the playground that's right there by the lake. Like, everything is great. The only thing you can't do is you can't kayak on the lake. Which... If you can't kayak, it'd be great because then the kids and who whatever adult is watching them can be right here and we could be right here on the lake. That makes any sense. And then swap out, whatever. But you can't kayak there. 
Well, or not, it's a really great big, it's a really great lake, um, and park, and there's, like, areas to ride bikes, and there's, like, all kinds of trails. It's an awesome park. So, me and my mom was like, hey, let's go over there. But before we went there, we went over to, um, it's called the CVG Airport. It's the Covington Airport, but it's over in Hebron and Florence. So, like, Florence and Hebron is the airport. Went over there, took them over. They got, like, this play area that's, that you could play at and watch the planes take off and everything. Kids absolutely loved it. The only thing was, is we didn't get there in the time that the airplanes would be, like, in full suit. So, like, we saw maybe, like, four or five within, like, an hour. As to if you were, like, there in the other times, you'd see, like, 20, 30, 40 of them just, like, taking off and landing. Like, pretty cool. Um... So we ended up leaving there, stopped, and got Little Caesars, and went over to the went over to Alexandria Community Park. I thought that was my mom for a minute. So while we're there, we're walking around. Kids are playing, rolling down the hill. You know, it's a great park. Like nobody gets in trouble for anything unless it's illegal. We weren't doing anything illegal. Um, Lex was even rolling down the hill having fun. Well, this super steep still, steep hill, and before I even say this, my daughter's accident prone, she halfway listens, and she does things without thinking. They All things that she's working on with us, her therapist, and, like, everything in between. Um, I mean, like, the school and her therapist and, like, everybody know, like, I, I wouldn't, like, one, I physically can't hurt my kids. Two, um, they know on a daily basis that she will just, like, walk. And no, she don't need door. She don't need glasses. She's got 20-20 vision. I already had her at the eye doctor like multiple times about the situation. But she'll sit there and she'll just get up and go, just start take off. Don't even like don't even try to, you know, don't even think to see if the door's open. Walk right into the door. Um she will sit there and her like the chair will be all the way on the ground. She'll sit there and just up and decide to just fall out of the chair. Um, Bolt's Lake. She decided to like, my mom's here by the edge helping Mason get his little kayak and his paddles and help him up on the dock. Aubrey decides to take off her life jacket and just walk off the dock. My mom immediately grabs her up out of the water and we're like, what the heck? She goes, I just walked off and I don't know why. Like, she can't swim. And I kept telling her, do not take your life jacket off. Do not take your life jacket off. And I was, um, I just, like, literally, I turned my head for a split second. And I unzipped, um, Ellie's, was it Ellie? Ellie or Amber's? I want to say it was Ellie's. I just, all I did was where Ellie got her zipper caught stuck where she couldn't get it, um, zipped up. I, like, wiggled it and zipped it up. Like, a matter of seconds. And there's Aubrey off into the water. But she wasn't, like, maybe this far away from my mom. The whole thing made no sense. But they see it on a daily basis with her. They know it's OBS. Like, it's it's a working progress with her. Um, but anyways, as I go on to say this, there's like this super steep hill. And when I say steep, I mean... Oh, shoot. So instead of the hill being like this or like this, this hill's like this, top to bottom. Mason goes, Memo Jesse, I am going to roll down the hill and then run back up. All Aubrey hears is, go down the hill, run back up. This child, if I, like, no exaggeration, if I had one of those, like, speedometer things on her, the speed readers, she was probably doing, like, eight, nine miles an hour going down that hill. She, like, made it, I want to say, halfway. And me and my mom was like, Aubrey, slow down, slow down, slow down. It is steep, slow down. And um, she went. And she flipped. We heard something snap. We thought it was her neck. She wasn't moving. Mason was like halfway to her. Um, super steep. I physically could not go down that hill. So I said, um, initial thought was Mason. And you know, my mom's like trying to take everything off, set stuff down to go help Obs. And I'm like, Mason, go check your sister. Just check her. I was like, Grandma Jessie's on her way down. Um, you know, see if she needs help up, see what's wrong. You know, don't, we were like, don't move her neck, you know, just like, at, like, talk to her and see if she's okay. If she's okay, help her up. See what, you know, Mason tried to help her up. She couldn't walk. Um, 
And, you know, at this point, when Mason gets to her and he's trying to lift her up, she kept, like, falling back down. So, my mom's down on the hill. My mom picks up Ob's, carries her to the top. And, at this point, Aubrey was holding her right, left wrist. It's her left wrist because she had her watch on. She's holding her left wrist and I think it was her right knee. Yeah, left wrist, right knee. And she was walking. She said her knee hurt. I was thinking, well, maybe it very well may not be her knee. Maybe it might be her ankle. So we went maybe like, I don't even know, not even five feet to a bench. And I'm like, okay, clearly you're able to put pressure on it. You're not screaming. You're not crying. Like she wasn't crying. Like you're not screaming. You're not crying. I was like, let's sit here for a minute. Let's, you know, get you looked at. Let's, you know, get everything processed. And Aubrey usually, she will sit there and have something happen and walks it right off. So we were like, okay, we will sit here for about 10, 15 minutes. If you want to go across, you know, if you want to keep going, we will. If not, we'll go home. And um, Aubrey wanted to go on. And then after a little bit, she was like, you know, she was like, I just want to go home. So I told her, I was like, okay, um, Aubrey can also be dramatic. Um, really dramatic. And I mean it not in the sense of where like I'll ever deny her medical attention if need be, but as a parent, you know when and when not to go to the emergency room or you know you know what I mean um so I knew she was okay she was walking perfectly fine back to the car she wasn't even holding her wrist at this point she was using that same wrist to open up the van door you know it's automatic like she was just still using it to pull on it um she was carrying my mom's water bottle at this time because she was like she wanted to carry it so I said okay I said here's the deal and I just told her in the car, I was like, we're going to go home. You have the option of, you know, do you want to play the game? You want to watch a movie? You know, whatever you want to do. We'll get some ice on it, you know, on your wrist. Check, you know, because ultimately we knew she was fine. But I said, if you are still in pain by, say, next tomorrow morning, because this happened at like 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I said, if you're still in pain by tomorrow morning, then what we'll do is we will go to... I'll take the emergency room because then my mom's off work. I can leave the kids with her um, at my house and it would just be me and her going Daniel at work, you know. So once again, I wouldn't have to take everybody with me to the emergency room for something like that because really she didn't come in by squad and it's not life threatening and she's not screaming, wailing, nothing like that. Even with the broken bone, they kind of make you sit for a minute. So she ended up being fine. Daniel brought home some um, children's ibuprofen for her, and she was fine. But it's like, kid, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And it's one of those things, like, I felt absolutely bad. My mom felt absolutely bad. But when you have some, when you have a child who does these kinds of things multiple times a day, like, no joke, probably like five or six times a day, every single day she's doing something it starts to become this thing of like i will always how can i explain this without sounding rude like i know when and when not like i said to seek medical attention as a parent you you get that um like when mason stitches or when mason um hit the corner of the coffee t the old entertainment center i know immediately we had to go. I called squad for him. But, you know, it's just this thing of, by the way, he had to get stitches on this side. If I get copyrighted, I have nothing against homeless people, but if I get copyrighted because of a homeless man and a speaker, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> Alright, so anyways, what was I saying? Uh, it's something I'll never seek medical attention for, but when she does these things over and over and over and over again, and it's like, child, like, we know she is diagnosed with ADHD and borderline ODD, and we know she is very hyperactive, but she's more attention deficit like ADD and attention deficit disorder. Um, if 
hopefully they'll block it out so but it's just that thing of you know what do you do in that situation because you kind of got to laugh it off you know to her face you know you're like okay let's check it out or you know you're all right walk it off because if you make a big deal out of it they're gonna make a deal, big deal out of it and even when like something happens like say a broken bone or actually i when i was pregnant with lex and mason busted his eye i did not panic around him um i told him it was going to be okay me daniel aubrey actually daniel went by squad with mason because i physically could not climb in the squad with him and i took the car with me and aubrey and we drove to children's and that's how we got up with them daniel kept his cool and everything about it mason was upset he was crying he was worried um we all thought and the doctors thought that like he busted his whole entire eyeball like he was gonna have to have his eyeball surgically you know taken out and he was gonna have like a glass eye that's the level of what we thought it was but after i think that happened at like six seven o'clock at night and we didn't leave until like five six o'clock in the morning there um they just realized he just needed stitches um got it flushed out we were waiting on, because um, I mean, like I said, we thought we needed surgery. So we were waiting for the optometrist to come in. I think I'm saying that right. I think it's the optometrist. We were waiting for the optometrist to come in and actually thoroughly look at his eye. There was one optometrist that was bouncing back and forth between four hospitals that night. And there was, you know, we were waiting for him. We were waiting for, you know, if he had to have surgery, it would have to be like first thing in the morning. Um... You know, it was a long night. Daniel took off that day. Oh my gosh, it was it was so long. But he only needed three stitches right here, just three stitches, and he had a tear right right here, which they couldn't really do nothing. It was a tear. Um. So yeah, but you know, you just don't make a big deal about it. You you comfort them. You, you know, I'm the one with my kids too. That once when I know that they're okay with something. And I know that they're not, like, genuinely scared or they're starting to be scared. I will start to laugh. Not, like, a mean way. But I'll start to be laughing. I'll be like, I don't even know. Like, say, for instance, I ain't even got an example, for real. Oh, like, okay, random, random. Okay, so, say something major happened, right? But everything was fine. So, if Aubrey was to say... Say, for instance, Aubrey decided to fall off the chair that's not that far away from the ground. Maybe, like, a foot and a half, two feet away from the ground. She decides to fall off of there. And she ends up peeing herself. Or, um, you know, just something. And, you know, she's sitting there and she, I don't even know, friggin', like, nothing major, nothing life-threatening. And, you know, she's upset about it at first, and then she's not. And then, you know, when she comes to the point, like, you can actually joke around with her about it. You're like, well, at least you landed on the, at least you landed on the house floor, not in a pile of poop. Or, you know, something, something to make her laugh, you know, something to make her, you know, lighten the mood, basically. But I do that with the kids. Like, um, like, I don't even remember when all happened. I remember what happened, but I don't remember, like, what all was said when Mason was in the hospital. But I remember one point in time, he was scared. Like, he was over the initial fact of being scared, but he was worried about getting the stitches. Um, because he was unsure. It was his first set of stitches, and it was going right there by his eye. So I told Mason, I said, look. I said, I know you're scared. But it was, like, more of, like, a nervous thing. But I was like, I, was like, I know you're scared, but... At least you're getting two stitches instead of getting like your whole like your whole arm taken off. I was like, do you know how silly? And I have nothing against people with like amputated body parts, but I was like, do you know how silly it would be if you would sit there and try to play video games and you only had one arm? Or I was like, imagine you're sitting there trying to do your trying to do your um, somersaults and stuff, and you only have one arm. And or I said, what if? What if they left your arm and they took out, like, all your bones and you had, like, a wiggly arm, like, on Harry Potter where, like, you had no bones? I was like, that'd be silly, wouldn't it? And I was like, well, I said, 
what I could do was I could stretch your arm and I can like smack it, smack it to the wall or something and have you climb up it like a, um, one of those like splat hands. And he was cracking up laughing. He, you know, but I'm going to hop off here. I've been on here for 45 minutes. My mom gets out in five minutes and I just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. So hope y'all enjoyed this kind of video. I know like 15 minutes ago, I was like, I'm going to hop off here, but I'm officially going to hop off of here and I will see y'all in another video. Bye guys.